Hey guys, seems to me that we're doing it like a daily thing, but let's see what it looks like with the pace. But usually I will just make these videos to see if it's more informative and if it's worth sharing. But other than that, we are on the 17th of August and we're going to take a look at what the battle map looks like. A quick stats and database I wanted to show you is that the Russian losses according as of today. Now you can choose to interpret this in any way if you want. I don't fully 100% believe it or even trust it, but it is good to speculate. As the war is ongoing, we will not get the full real numbers until the very end and possibly even several years. But without do, we say that personnel is now 262,000, which is including killed Russian units is 65,000 that has passed since last night. Otherwise in that, they have included eight more tanks to the list and armored combat vehicles of plus 12 and t artillery is taken out plus 10. No movement in aircraft helicopters or ships and boats but there will be a new aircraft included by tomorrow and i'll let you know why later and without further ado let's just get into it um first i just wanted to say one state one thing is that we are in blackout warfare on the ukrainian side let me show you what i mean right here this is a nice map it's deep state live it is pro ukrainian very simple but pay attention we haven't gotten any updates since the 15th. That means that means that we are in blackout warfare. It means that we're not going to get any information, any posts from the Ministry of Defense, no photos, no real footage until the whole thing is over. So today is very interesting because all we have to rely off of is a few military bloggers and especially from the Russian side, Russian military bloggers. Now, if you don't like that, you don't like to hear the, the news from the Russian side or don't agree with it, I'll say just leave. You don't have to listen to it. You don't like bad news, then you can go to, to another channel. But we are going to pay attention to it nonetheless. I'm going to show you what it says and we're going to simplify, try to make means of what the Ukrainians are doing, where the movement is going. And yeah, let's just get into it. We're going to actually change the map right now and I wanted to... I think we're going to start over with the Kyrgyzstan region. That seems to be where I want to go to. Yeah. Now, everything, I just wanted to let you know, every source you can ask me down below. I'm willing and more than happy to write it all in my description for you guys to share and use at your own will and at your own expense. All I ask is that you just give me a like and just enjoy the show. Without further ado, just to get into it, let's start with the Kyrgyzstan region. This is very interesting because right now so i'm going to take out my pen it looks very clunky with all the notes and everything so we'll get into what it means basically there's a lot of reconnaissance going on and if we take out our pen right here we'll take this we're seeing a lot of battling and intensity going from here and as well as here and these what we're gonna do let me zoom in a bit more so you can see it it seems to me that the cure in the cures in front that this side is trying to do a maneuver and go down south towards Milove, or in this case, my love, however you would like to pronounce it. In the same meaning, we have a push, a deep push coming from the Ukrainian side, coming here, moving in this direction. Now, that means that there's a lot of bombardment in this area. There's a lot of artillery, especially from the Russian side to hold it down. The Ukrainians are the ones making the offensive, making the first play while the Russians are on the back foot, holding down the line as much as possible a lot of vehicles a lot of destruction going on and a lot of boat and a lot of um what is it? a lot of military losses and troops personnel losses from both sides so what we can say is that according to ukrainian sources from what we do have is that six russians are dying compared to what to every one ukrainian now whether we believe that to be true or not it could be inflated and it could be a stretch but never but nevertheless nonetheless it's showing that it is showing the intensity of what this area is like what we a lot of military losses and troops personnel losses from both sides so what we can say is that according to ukrainian sources from what we do have is that six russians are dying compared to what to every one ukrainian now whether we believe that to be true or not it could be inflated and it could be a stretch but never but nevertheless nonetheless it's showing that it is showing the intensity of what this area is like 
what we and a lot of military losses and troops personnel losses from both sides so what we can say is that according to ukrainian sources from what we do have is that six russians are dying compared to what to every one ukrainian now whether we believe that to be true or not it could be inflated and it could be a stretch but never but nevertheless nonetheless it's showing that it is showing the intensity of what this area is like what we a lot of military losses and troops personnel losses from both sides so what we can say is that according to ukrainian sources from what we do have is that six russians are dying compared to what to every one ukrainian now whether we believe that to be true or not it could be inflated and it could be a also no in the area if we move down west and closer to the city of kherson is that we have right underneath mikolaev in this area we're seeing a lot of movement and a lot of build-up from the ukrainian military that is moving on to the front on the eastern side of kherson which i just showed you before that means that you're seeing a lot of bombardment and i actually have a better map or another map that i can show you to show you what i'm talking about it's stated by both Rybar and a lot of other Russian military bloggers that they're trying to take out all pontoon bridges. If you guys don't know, pontoon bridges are the ones that go in the water and help um, mobilize troops to get to the other side. But throughout all these rivers, they're trying to take them out to slow down their process of getting resources out to the front lines from that side. And you can already see that there is still a lot of artillery seven hours ago, six hours ago. Thanks to the live UA map, we can actually geolocate what's going on. Moving on, we're going to go back to this map right here. Get rid of Grammarly. And just stay tuned to what happens in Kyrgyzstan region. Next, we move on and we're going to get to something that's really considered very intense right now. And that is the Bakhmut area in this as we can see right here, actually, it shows a lot of gun battles going on. This uh, this one's a simplified map, so it's less clunky, to, and it makes my life a lot easier to explain it. We have battles going on off of Vesele that is also being posted uh, with sources right here. Yeah, Yakolivka, as well as we have Bakhmuts right here, which is still ongoing. We have uh, Krypne, and then we have uh, another one to the south. Everything gray along this line is complete artillery fire complete 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 chaos what we do know as of right now since recording is that the russians have not taken control yet it seems to me that they're doing some pushes right here it's halting but then they do a retreat at some point and they keep and they keep doing that hoping to get some more gains but it seems to me that it is just very intense and we've also have statements from the ukrainian side saying that this is a very tough area right now so that is something to keep in mind as well moving up north we haven't heard too much i've heard a bit but i don't know how much i can say it's about this this was about four or five days ago now about this push i believe it's been receded or it's still ongoing we have not heard much more about it but it seems to me that this has been halted for now so until then that's all i can say now we're gonna go to something else we're seeing a lot more troop buildup right here. I'm going to show you the mobilized forces. Ah, there we are. Troop buildup shows that there is more you, there's more Russian coming in. It's now more than 50,000. There's more troops. It is also stated that 9,000 more Russian troops have now entered Gomel by train. And there's a buildup. That also just means if you've seen my last video is that they're going is that the Ukrainians from the south would have to split up their resources in order to see to make sure that they can defend the north. Otherwise, they leave Kiev, the capital. Let me show you its direct location just in case that leaves a uh, Kiev directly open from all sides right here. And and from Mikulayev, where a lot of the resources we know it comes from Mikulayev because it's about 60,000 troops, maybe more strong. And they would need to send about another 20 to 30k up there in order to fend off what's going to come from this front. There's also reports going on that I can actually show you from live UA map. If we look at live UA map, uh, it's a bit laggy right now. 
and I'm sure you guys have seen videos and everything already that there's a lot of Iranian kamikaze drones getting shot off and shot down. Now, it's see, it is estimated or stated that Russia is using around 600 kamikaze drones per day. How long can they sustain this and keep this up? It is complete havoc. It is destroying a lot of infrastructure. It is attempting to take out a lot of ammunition depots and a lot of NATO hardware. That is the claims that is going on from the military bloggers from the Russian side. But we're also noticing that there's not 600 explosions. It is still havoc all across. Like, let me zoom out just to show you, not just Kiev. Every single blue means that, as a, that is in this like location shows that it's air raid signs going off. And there is destruction and they all have to go underground into tunnels. I have a friend actually located without saying his name. I have a friend located in this region right here. I'm not going to be specific of where he is uh, being of where he's being sheltered when this happens. And so it gets hard to get communication because of lack of Wi-Fi. But moving on, there's a lot of Ukrainian sustainment or there's a their ability to repel what is going on with the kamikaze drones they are able to take some down and it seems to me that the air defense system especially in the in the key region is being repelled right now i'm going to show you from here i like this map mm -mm -mm -mm. moving up to kiev yeah nothing but air raid signs in kiev all the the majority is coming from the eastern side in this perspective this is where all the kamikaze drones seem to be hitting the most now now we have some interesting news let's move away from the battlefield and let's see something that was actually very bizarre that happened today and if you follow my telegram and if you follow my tiktok you know i've already brought this up before we have go moving directly into live ua map gonna take off my pen where is it? Okay, scrolling down. Now we get to the city of Yevsk. Yevsk, I think it's called. Where all of a sudden, a Russian Su-34 drone, I mean, I mean, air fighter, actually, a Su-34 crash landed after, after takeoff and crashed into a residential area. Now, the pilot was able to eject. I will show it on my screen right here. It was according to the according to sources it was two pilots that was on there but we've only seen one pilot right here it was according to the according to sources it was two pilots that was on there but we've only seen one pilot eject i have no idea what happened to the other pilot or if he's even alive as of this point one of them is alive and he's ejected now as for the as for the crash it hit a residential building of nine stories and it's taken out four dead and the way you see this it's actually 10 dead now and possibly even more now the jet fuel exploded and it made everything more chaotic and there ended up being a second and a third explosion after it's um, after impact and that seemed to be that there was missiles that were on its way to bomb ukraine have also blown up here so that is somewhat of a fiasco knowing that it comes from an actual plane that costs 40 to 50 million dollars to manufacture all for it to not really take off and malfunction and come to its end. That is what we have so far. And in other news, I was saying there was a there was a prison swap right here. If you see on this side, about less than an hour ago, where 108 military women were liberated from Russian captivity in an exchange for a prisoner swap of 110 Russians, not Russian women, just Russian military or mercenary as of right now i'll say we will end it at that short and simple and keep updated if you guys want to follow my telegram or follow my youtube channel it'll mean the world to me and i hope to see you guys soon take care